Welcome back. I know many of you know the numbers. More than a half a million Americans and counting have been killed by COVID. But some of the other numbers that we're just beginning to get a handle on are some of the consequences beyond the tragic loss of life. The total impact this pandemic has had on the mental health of Americans, particularly teenagers. Tens of millions of kids, as you know, they've been home from school for months, not seeing their friends, pretty much all social activities all but disappeared. And it has taken its toll. Every parent knows this, but now when we see the data, it may even be worse than many of us thought. All of them that I'm gonna give you, every metric concerning, a group called Fair Health studied the mental health services of kids between the ages of 13 and 18. And they looked at from last spring versus 2019, found out that anxiety, depression, substance abuse, self-harm, all rose exponentially during the first wave of the pandemic. For more, I wanna to turn to a man who knows this firsthand. He treats a lot of young people trying to deal with the stresses of COVID. I wanna bring in psychologist, Dr. Jeff Gardier. And, and doctor, I can put a, a, a perspective on this. I've got three teenage kids, one in college and two in high school. And thankfully, um, I haven't had to go through some of the, the horrible experiences a lot of families have, but I see the stress on them and I hear the stories about what their friends are going through. And a lot of these kids, they get to grow up in a nuclear family where they're not worried about the food on their table. Talk about what you're seeing because the numbers are jarring, just how traumatic um, this last year has been for millions and millions of American kids. Well, Richard, you're absolutely right. Uh, even though many of the kids may not have the concerns about starvation, as we know in the third world, um, they do have the real problems uh, still of the mental health tsunami that came from COVID-19. Everything that you've said, uh, not being able to get in-person instruction, uh, not attending uh, graduations, uh, not going to uh, football games or being able to play uh, the first tier sports that they are uh, used to. So what we're seeing is a record number of cases of anxiety and depression in these young people. Uh, certainly, again, what you said, uh, suicide rates are increasing uh, and these kids are really suffering. We often think, Richard, that children are resilient, but this is the first time these kids, as we have uh, in this lifetime, have gone through a pandemic and how it's affecting them uh, in many ways, very similar to how it affects us as adults, and that many of us have anxiety and depression. Many of us are going into therapy to deal with this upside down world, uh, but how they're being affected uh, in many ways is just as serious, if not even more. You know, and I've heard different um, thinking on this. One is, doctor, that young people see their parents struggling um, or going through some of the same stresses or let alone the family environment where people aren't going off to the office or whatever and constrained in a closer environment only ramps up. And they don't feel, uh, these kids do, that they can articulate their problems because compared to maybe what their parents are going through or what extended family, maybe there's a loss of life or whatever else, they feel they gotta bottle it up. And we're talking still developing kids here. They're not equipped to do that, nor should they. That's right. Uh, and that's why we have a term that we use in psychology called acting out. Um, and that is a defense mechanism where they're not able to identify verbally uh, or even consciously the angst that they are experiencing. So instead, they may get angry, they may throw things, maybe they'll sexually act out, maybe they'll use drugs. Um, and so they're not able to have uh, or able to articulate exactly what it is that they're feeling. So you're right bottling it up inside, internalizing it, uh, keeps us from hearing what they're going through, but certainly we can see what it is that they are experiencing by a lot of the inappropriate behaviors. Uh, I was working with a youngster who went outside of his bubble, um, got into a lot of trouble with his parents, but this youngster felt absolutely 
horrified by it, felt so guilty, was angry with himself, and cried for days after this. Uh, normally, we don't see that in a teenager. When they get in trouble, you know, they deal with it, they move on. And so we know that these kids have been emotionally compromised because of COVID. You know, doctor, uh, I've heard, and you can put a finer point on it, that the demand far outweighs the supply for kids who need someone, a professional to talk to. Obviously, can't do it in person anymore. It ain't the same. Zoom's better than nothing, I grant you, but there's not enough of you guys to go around. And I believe I'm under counting just how much the demand is out there, aren't I? The demand was incredible to begin with, the supply and demand before COVID. Not enough pediatricians, child psychologists, social workers, um, psychiatrists, they just weren't there. So in many ways, parents were very, very upset, felt very frustrated that when they wanted to get help for their kids, they couldn't do it. Now with the demands on our time as therapists, and by the way, when we're looking at the African-American or Latinx population, only 5% of the psychologists uh, and psychiatrists I think it's even 3% are African-American. So these parents are just ripping their hair out, trying to find ways to get help for their kids. And you're right, doing teletherapy certainly has been something that has helped us, many of us, but some of the parents have been laid off. They don't have the insurance to pay for the therapy. So it has been very, very difficult to even get the needed help that the kids need out there and they really need it, and they need it now. You know, I, I don't want to bombard my audience with numbers, but the overdose helplines, uh, the call volume has gone through the roof. I saw a number, scared the living hell out of me. One in four kids between 18 and 24 has contemplated suicide. Um, listen, I, I thought, and I'll show my ignorance, a year ago I had a kid graduating, and I said, oh, big deal, you don't get to go to your prom, you don't get to go to your graduation, big scheme of things, you've got it going pretty good. That was the worst thing I, I could have said, let alone articulated. Talk about what parents um, who are dealing with kids um, that are missing important signposts in their life, who are missing seeing their friends, who are missing the normal things that kids need here, socialization, what should they do? Well, first of all, Richard, I don't think what you said was so bad. Uh, maybe it might have been a little bit insensitive uh, in that quite often that we as parents say things to our kids where we say, hey, suck it up, it'll be okay. But I think all of us are learning, Richard, all of us as parents as we go along are learning that we're going to have to do it in a very different way. We're going to have to really listen to kids now during these times of the pandemic. We're really going to have to pay attention attention to some of their very subtle behaviors, as well as some of their outrageous behaviors, that these are, um, in many ways, their cries for help, and that we can always do better. We're not always available uh, as parents, especially in these times that we're in. Um, but as long as we try to do better every day with our kids, and we try to establish that rapport, it's not always going to be perfect. We're learning along the way. This is our first pandemic that we've shared together, Richard, with our kids. So certainly, as we learn and get better and do better, I think our kids will appreciate that effort. Dr. Gardier, great advice as always. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right, folks, when we come back, uh, we're going to put a bow on tonight's show. Please stay with us.